The ArcGIS Viewer from Microsoft Silverlight is a configurable, ready-to-deploy web client for ArcGIS Server and ArcGIS Online services. It also works with web maps that are published on ArcGIS.com. The Viewer is built on the award-winning ArcGIS API for Silverlight, which won Visual Studio Magazine's Reader's Choice Award for GIS and mapping components. The Silverlight Viewer allows you to easily and quickly create new web mapping applications without programming and you don't have to edit configuration files. It includes an application builder which provides an interactive what you see is what you get user experience. For those of you who have used the Web ADF application builder inside ArcGIS Server Manager, this is the product for you. And we encourage you to participate in the public beta simply log in and register with the ESRI beta community site. The URL is shown at the bottom of the slide. This is the main landing page for the Silverlight Viewer Application Builder. It's got some introductory text and I simply click Create New Application to get started. Here I have two options. I can create a new map for my web mapping application or I could use an existing web map that's published on ArcGIS.com. I can also interactively sign in to ArcGIS.com, give my login credential information and click sign in. Observe the bottom of the application builder interface changes as my personal settings are loaded. I can view maps that are recently looked at and also my maps and also groups that I belong to. However, for now, I will log out of ArcGIS.com and create a brand new web map. This is the Silverlight Viewer Application Builder. At the top is a ribbon which contains three tabs, Map, Tools, and Layout. Each tab corresponds to a functional area in your web mapping application that you're about to create the data content, its functionality, and its look and feel. Below the ribbon is a preview of the web mapping application that you're about to build. You can see it's got a base map loaded by default. When you first start using the application builder, you'll see a getting started panel in the lower right hand corner. This is designed to help new users for both the application builder and also new users who are creating web mapping applications for the first time get started. Notice it has three sub tabs map, tools, and layout which correspond to the tabs in the ribbon. When I click the tools tab notice that the tools tab in the ribbon also becomes activated. The same thing for the layout tab. If I click back on the map tab notice that the map tab in the ribbon also gets activated. So the first step in building my very own web mapping application is to choose a base map. When I click show me, it will activate the tool and allow me to select and guide me on how to use it. Next, I could add an operational layer. Again, I click show me, it activates the browse tool and open up the browse side panel. The same thing for the tools tab, where I could click show me for adding a tool and it will activate the Add Tool dialog. I can also hide this Getting Started tab by simply clicking the X in the upper right hand corner. It doesn't remove the Getting Started panel, it simply hides it and if I want to bring it back I can click the question mark in the lower right hand corner. As you can see we've designed the Silverlight Viewer Application Builder user interface to be very user friendly. Let's start building our own web mapping application. And the scenario I'm going to use is I want to build a crime data viewer for the city of Lincoln, Nebraska. So the first thing I'm going to do is click the map tab and select a new base map. I will choose Bing Maps Roads. Next, I will add some crime data as an operational layer. When I click the Browse button, it opens the Browse side panel. And in this dialog, I can connect to different ArcGIS server instances. But in this case, I know that crime data service is already available on this instance. 
I click add selected layer and the layer appears in my map contents notice it's also in my map so I will rename the layer to something more intuitive in this case crime 2008 let's take a look at the type of data we have I'm going to right click on the layer and select go to which will change the map display to zoom to the extent of the features and I can hover my cursor above some of the points to look at some of the pop-up information for these points I can select the pop-up to show some of its attribute features I can also look at the attribute table for this data layer and notice now that I can select features and they will appear in the map display you can see that the information is somewhat cryptic so I'm going to configure how the data appears in the web mapping application I can right click and choose configure which will open up the layer properties the first thing I'm going to do is make the pop-ups appear more simpler so I can click pop-ups uncheck all the attribute fields and only have the symbology and team area fields appear I can do the same thing for the attribute table uncheck all the fields and simply choose symbology and team area appear in the attribute table now when I hover my cursor over a feature and open up the pop-up only symbology and team area fields appear I can also open up the attribute table and as you can see only two attribute fields appear next I'm gonna set some custom symbology for the crime data I'll click symbology and change the renderer from single symbol to unique values specifically I'm going to use the symbology attribute field which contains all the crime categories so I will click assault and choose a red pinhead symbol for auto theft I will choose a blue pinhead symbol for burglary I will choose a green pinhead symbol and lastly for narcotics I will choose a purple pinhead symbol now in the interest of time I'm not gonna set a custom symbol for all the categories but once I exit from this dialog you'll notice now the map has updated live real time with my new custom symbology I've shown you some of the options to configure a data layer but the application builder also has some very cool built-in functionality for example I can create a heat map of my crime data I simply click add heat map and the application builder now will generate a heat map of my crime data in fact if I zoom in you can see the concentration of features what I can do is actually take my heat map and move it underneath my crime 2008 point data another option for point data layers is the ability to cluster the point features I'm going to select the crime 2008 data layer and configure its properties notice at the bottom of the configuration side panel I can choose to cluster the points by selecting the default options you can see now my point features have been clustered when I hover over a cluster the points that are participate in the cluster will flare up and this is really cool out-of-the-box functionality however for now I'm gonna keep my default unique symbology continuing with my example of building a crime data viewer one common belief is that annual household income relates to the occurrences of crime I'm going to click the browse button and add some additional data I'll connect to ArcGIS online and I'm going to add some demographic data to my viewer I can open up the demographics service and add the US median household income service hopefully I can maybe see some trends or patterns now this is a polygon service so what I will do now is configure its properties 
and make it transparent. I will then move it underneath my crime point data layer as well as my heat maps. To find out more information about a service, I can right click on it and choose service details. This opens up the services directory or rest endpoint for that service, in this case demographics, USA, median household income. And I can click the legend link to look at the symbology. Notice it's broken down by block groups and tracks. Essentially, the darker the color, the higher the household income. The lighter the color, the lower the household income. I can return back to the application builder and I can start to see some general trends. There are more crime points inside lighter colored polygons versus fewer crime points in the darker polygons which have higher household incomes. Now that I have my data content for my web mapping application, I'm next going to add some functionality, so I will select the Tools tab. Notice now here is where I can define functionality for my web mapping application. I'll start by clicking the Manage tool to open up the Manage Toolbars dialog. In this dialog, I can control the functionality that's available in my web mapping application. I'm going to move the dialog box over to the left slightly, and you can see now we have a whole list of available tools on the left, and I can add them to the application interface on the right. I want to highlight the main toolbar section. Notice all these tools listed underneath. These tools appear in the upper right-hand corner of my current web mapping application. So I'm going to add a geoprocessing tool. I select it, I click Add, and observe now it appears in my main toolbar. I can also change the order of my tools, so I will move my geoprocessing tool further into the toolbar. Notice again now it appears in my main toolbar in its new position. Now I am going to configure my geoprocessing tool, so I can select Edit. I will give it a name and I will call it Drive Time because I want the tool to access a geoprocessing service that calculates drive time. So I will change the tooltip as well. A tool that calculates drive times and I can configure it by selecting the configure button. First I have to add a geoprocessing task so I will connect to a ArcGIS server instance that has geoprocessing services and in this case I will add a network service under the drive time US toolbox I can add create drive time polygons I can now configure the parameters for the geoprocessing service the input parameters as well as the output parameters I'm going to change the default drive time order to be 3, 5, and 8 minutes. I'll leave the rest of the settings at their default, and I'll click OK to finish configuring the geoprocessing tool. I could add additional tools, but for now, I'll just add that geoprocessing tool. I am almost done building my Crime Data Viewer application. I click the Layout tab, and here is where I can customize the look and feel of my application. First, I will add a custom logo. And I will add a Crime Solvers icon. Next, I will add a custom title. I'm going to call the Viewer application the Crime Data Viewer for Lincoln, Nebraska. I also have the option of redefining the help links at the upper right hand corner of the application, but for now I will leave them at their defaults. And that's it. I'm done. I can click Deploy to create my new web mapping application. And I will title this Crime Viewer and click OK. 
the application builder now will create my new web mapping application and open it up in a brand new browser dialog. And here we have the finished crime data viewer for the city of Lincoln, Nebraska web mapping application that was generated from application builder. Notice all of its settings match what we set inside application builder. I can view the map contents by opening the map contents panel and I can see that all my data layers appear. I can also select the crime 2008 data layer and view its attribute table. And if I select features in the map display, you can see now the corresponding record is selected in the attribute table, as well as the attribute fields that I defined for the pop-up. I can also change the base map by choosing the base map tool and changing the base map to imagery for the application. Next, I will execute the drive time geoprocessing tool. And here, I can basically create drive time polygons with that drive time geoprocessing service. So I will click the tool to draw a point, and now I will execute the geoprocessing tool. And as you can see, it's created drive time polygons around that location that I specified. So pretty powerful stuff um, and pretty amazing functionality inside the application builder. Now what if I showed my manager my web mapping application, but he or she did not like the look and feel? I can easily change the appearance of my website. I am going to close this browser window and notice now I am back at my default landing page for the application builder and you can see the introductory text is now gone and what I see is actually my web mapping application that I just created. I can click the edit button and now I'm thrown back into application builder and I can make some changes. So if I want to change the layout and look and feel of my application, I can click the layout button and choose one of several different layout templates um, that are included with the application builder. And I can preview how they look. Now I'm going to choose the floating panel layout and click apply. And I will close my layout dialog and as you can see now my web mapping application has changed appearance. I may also want to configure some of its color settings. So I can change the accent color to perhaps a light blue and I can change the accent text to a green. I will close this dialog and now I can save my configuration settings and when I go back to view my published website in a new browser window, you can see that my layout configuration settings have been easily applied. To summarize, the ArcGIS Viewer from Microsoft Silverlight is an excellent configurable client viewer to services from ArcGIS Server and ArcGIS Online. It also works with web maps that are published on ArcGIS.com. And as you saw in the demo, the application builder allows you to easily and quickly create a brand new web mapping application in an interactive user experience. Deploying the new website is very easy. The Silverlight viewer will also include extensibility kits, which will allow Silverlight API developers to create new custom functionality for the Silverlight Viewer. Again, we encourage you to participate in the public beta of the ArcGIS Viewer from Microsoft Silverlight. Simply go to the ESRI Beta Community site and the URL is given below. Thank you for watching this video.